New Faith Baptist Church International's Bible study during COVID-19 in 2021. And that's right. We, <laughs> we're in October, my birthday month. What? <laughs> Y'all ain't ready. <laughs> <laughs> and so with that being said, oh, it's his birthday month to the guy. I don't know if they have us. Are we in squares or not? On no. our screen, we're in squares. We're in gallery. Yeah. I don't know on their screen if we're in gallery. But the other guy, his birthday was earlier this month. So, but it's my turn now. It's your okay. birthday week. No. So. Your birthday, birthday <laughs> month. <laughs> Month, tell him, said Reverend Bunch. He don't <laughs> but know it's me. actually this week, right? But, but it's actually right. this week, though. Yeah, right. yeah. So it's, it's the climax of your birthday month. Right. right. Thank you very much, and we yeah. shall carry it on until November because you ain't ready. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're excited to have you join us today. We love the Lord, and we we love you, and we're excited to have you with us today. I'm Reverend Dr. Alexis Felder, First Lady and Minister of Ministry Operations here at New Faith Baptist Church International. We are one church on two continents and three countries with 22 locations, living and giving to the glory of God. Gentlemen, please introduce yourselves. Reverend Greg Powell, Minister of Pastoral Hi. Care. <laughs> Point up with my blinds here. Okay. Reverend, Hello. Reverend, hey. Reverend, Reverend Sellers Vines, Minister of Justice. <laughs> Just trying to. This is what happens when my birthday comes around. Everyone gets so excited. <laughs> The party, the big party with the children. <laughs> We're not having it this year. I tried to do a video cupcake um, movie thing with the, the children's ministry, but um, it didn't work out. So, yeah, I wanted them to wear their costumes and we watch a movie together and they sing happy birthday to their mama in the spirit and we eat a cupcake together. Yeah, that's what I want to do because I have a, I have a party every year for the children since my birthday is on Halloween. Yeah, mm. so we just turn it into the hallelujah night and, and have a great time, but we weren't able to pull it off this year. My heart is so broken. Mm. <laughs> hey, kids, time to gather around for a nice little Halloween movie night. The movie tonight is Candyman. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Spooky Buddies. Spooky Buddies. <laughs> the little That's puppies. Not candy, man. <laughs> You're right. It was Spooky Buddies. Oh, okay. My bad. Yeah, it was spooky, Squid it was Games. Spooky buddies, so the little <laughs> well, he knows it that you're little puppies. He, yeah, he knows that you're a fan. <laughs> I went to see it by myself. You know that, right? Oh my goodness! I saw a lot of those by myself. I wish I never did till this day. <laughs> Anyway, I, the, right. <laughs> right, I think we dragged you once or twice, huh? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Exodus chapter four. <laughs> right, Verse we ain't never scared. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Let's go. Exodus Moses four. answered, what if they do, they do not believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to Moses, to him, what is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out and, and took a hold of the snake and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Verse six, then the Lord said, put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand into his cloak and when he took it out, it was leprous like snow. Now put it back into your cloak, he said. So Moses put his hand back into his cloak and when he took it out, it was restored like the rest of his flesh. Then the Lord said, if they do not believe you or pay attention to the first miraculous sign, to the first miraculous sign, they may believe the second. But if they do not believe th these two signs or listen to you, Take some water from the Nile and pour it on dry ground. The water you take from the river will become blood on the ground. Wow. Isn't it amazing? He said, if they don't believe the first miraculous sign, I know that's not where we need to start, but I just wanted to go there because, mm -hmm. wow, isn't that just like people today? <laughs> how we are in the church, how we are in life, we just don't believe what we see. We, God will show himself strong and mighty on our behalf. He'll heal us. He'll do something. He'll intervene. And we just don't apprehend. We don't submit. We don't 
reverence. We don't have reverence for him. We we just keep on. It's not good enough. We want more. We want more. But let's start with verse one. Sorry. <laughs> And so Moses is now going before he's getting instruction from the Lord to go to Pharaoh. Mm. And he's a little nervous. And he says with the, this is the famous line, right? What if they, um, what if they don't believe me that the Lord appeared to me? Mm. And he says, take what's in your hand. Yeah. Yeah. The great Adam Clayton Powell, one of his famous sermons, you know, what's in, what's in your hand? Use what's what in you your have. hand? It was a great sermon, but yeah. yeah. Yes, we've heard oh. that a couple times. <laughs> what's in your hand? That's right, remember, because now yeah. this is a sign that there was really, there was magic. There's sorcery in Egypt. There's magic. So when people try to um, make it seem like that there's not powers of darkness that are active then you're ignoring the text because now god is showing him what he has to do because god and moses knows what the egyptians do they know about their sorcery their was um their their sorcery their their wizardry they know about it and we in modern day christianity we don't we negate powers of darkness we act like if we just don't talk about it it's gonna go away we act like we just don't talk about it. You know, the enemy is not going to come for us. And he wants, it, you're valuable real estate. You are everything he wanted to be. And you have everything he wanted. And so he's coming for you regardless if you identify him or not. So mm-hmm. God is preparing him to match the magic with the power with the power. Mm-hmm. The, the power with the magic or the power with the power, however, whatever way is comfortable for you. He's letting them know now this will be a sign to my people, but this will also be a sign to your enemies that I'm with you. Yeah. And I think I think God was also um, dealing with Moses about the fear, you know, um, when he told him to throw the snake on the ground, you know, um, and Moses ran from it. <laughs> He's like, I mean, that's what we normally do. You know, we, we run from those things that we're afraid of, you know, that we have this this fear of, you know, and we have so many um, unwarranted fears, you know, uh, based on what we've seen the enemy do, you know, uh, displaying his magic, you know, and, and, and being, and us being familiar with his tactics and, and a lot of those tactics we've seen throughout our lifetime and, and they could, you know, they can induce fear, but God was immediate, immediately dealing with Moses about his fear uh, of a thing, you know, and uh, he told him, to, "Hey, come back to this. This the, you, you're going to have to overcome this in order for you to go on, you know, because you, you're going to have to you face know, a lot of things along the way." You know, knowing who God is and what you call Him, your relationship to Him is absolutely essential when you're in the battle, mm-hmm. and that's why you have the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. That's why you have the Lord of Hosts. That's why you have Adonai Elohim. You have Yahweh. You have Jehovah. Mm-hmm. You have the you're calling on the very nature by which you need to manifest <laughs> in your life. You know, when you um, when you're trying to get um, out of jail, um, you've been pulled over by the police as a teenager. You don't need your 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 parent to show up um, without their ID claiming you as parent. They uh, parent and child relationship. You, you, you don't need them coming up. Com- saying that they're, oh, no, this is my best friend. No, this is my mom. This is my dad. (laughs) I need that characteristic to show up on my behalf in this situation. And so um, when Moses is talking about the Lord, when the Lord said, um, throw down, throw it on the ground, he says, then the Lord said to him, God is is demonstrating to them that this nature is going to operate. It's going to manifest Mm -hmm. and fight for you in this particular situation. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so he calls him, what is it? Adonai Elohim? What does he call him? Yahweh in this text? Reverend uh, Kyle? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yahweh. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which a translation of Adonai. Um, and and it, which uh and it was basically a, a word that that during the the second temple times, you know, when the, when this was being written, um, and 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 conceptualized into the 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 the, the needs of and the the interpretations of the people at the time, that that name was just deemed too sacred to say, and so um, 
and so Yahweh was a translation of Adonai that they de de developed in place of the unpronounced, the un, um, the uh, pr the prescribed uh, word uh, uh, too sacred to pronounce. And then um, you know, as as time went on, uh, Yahweh became interspersed with the vowel sounds of Adonai to form Jehovah, Yahovah, actually in its original pronunciation, which was later on um, kind of did. Um, mispronounced really in popular of uh, translation into English as Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, and of course, in, in, in biblical times, they, they shortened it to Yah, uh, which is, that's one thing that the, that the Rastas got right, you know, that yeah, they got it right, Yah, they? <laughs> uh, was actually closer to the biblical uh, uh, reality than, uh, than a lot of others. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> I mean, just that, that this part is Right. Out. Cause we, we believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we believe that. <laughs> right, we often yeah, we often negate the good part. Yeah. And so here he is. He is he's preparing him to go. And he says, What if they don't listen? And that's the hard part in leadership, you know, when you're trying to lead a group of people and they don't hear your voice, when you don't have a hear ye. <laughs> and so God tells them, I, they're gonna listen to you. They're gonna listen to you. And you would think at some point in time that the pain, the frustration, the hard, um, the 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 endless laboring, um, the cycle <laughs> would um, get tiresome for some people, but it doesn't. And so, but in this case, you know, Moses is concerned and rightfully so. When I came to, when I asked the brothers to stop fighting each other, they turned on me. Oh, you're going to kill us like you did the last guy. And so he's, he, his concern is right. You know, I got to stand before Pharaoh. He has an army. He has magic. I got to stand before the Israelites. They don't like me. <laughs> I just tried to stop a small fight. So now you want me to talk to the whole nation? And so it's, um, he, he's, got a, he's got a heavy mantle on him. And whenever you have a heavy mantle, you better know that the enemy is going to launch a heavy attack. And so, and, and that's how you know what your calling is, is when you're, the, the fight that you're in. If there's no fight, then your calling is not as big as the one who is having the fight. But the heavy mantle indicates heavy battle. And so if you're fighting for your health, if you're fighting to maintain your marriage, you're fighting to advance God's kingdom, you're doing all of these, these things and you, you're constantly in opposition when people view your good as evil, then you know that your mantle is heavy, you know, and everyone doesn't have the same level of mantle. I mean, we can look at the disciples, you know, um, I don't want to call the prophets major and minor. I, don't, I hate that phrase. <laughs> major prophets, minor prophets, you know, sure. when they're a prophet, we need them. Yeah. But, you know, but you see the, but you even see it with the disciples, how they were, yeah. they were a crew that was closer to him. And then there was another crew that were very effective, very necessary, but they weren't a part of the inner circle. Mm -hmm. Am I making sense? Are you with me? Yeah. Are we together? <laughs> Are we together? <laughs> I mean, he called, uh, he, he, he chose to, to go with him, you know, uh, in, in prayer, you know, he, you know, he, he referenced, you know, I mean, even John, you know, he, he gave John his, his mom, you know, to, to care for, you know, he, he allowed John to be the one who received his final message to the world, you know, in the book of revelation. So, uh, <laughs> so, He's you know, so he, I, I know, I know. He you tells know, so the scariest he, stories. Right, right. <laughs> You know, and he had to suffer a little bit. You know, he was in prison. He was in the country in prison. You know, I'm not sure, you know, I mean, I don't, imprisonment as what we know it now. That he was out. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, but yet again, but that's that's a that's a tearing up, up from, you know, to be to have to live through that. You know, so he had to suffer through that. But yet and still, you know, Christ, he, he pulled them close. <laughs> so, yes, I agree. I agree totally. I just I, I think that for me the the power that I draw the 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 uh, in from so much of the word um, is how God meets us and meets the people where we are um, and and the uh, the the you know the, the slow to anger and abundance uh, and and steadfast love the patience of God um, because you know when you look at it from the point of view of this people why would they believe Moses. I mean, he wasn't from them. He didn't come. You know, he was he was he's from the he's basically an Egyptian. He got mm -hmm. an Egyptian name. He ain't even got a Hebrew name. 
you know, and this dude coming saying that the Lord has spoken to me after we ain't heard from the Lord for 400 years that we've been suffering in slavery. And now that things have gotten, you know, bad, we still maintain the faith. We still prayed. We still, you know, called out as the word tells us in the previous chapters. Uh, you know, they, 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 the Lord heard their groaning. So they never lost their, their sense of God's presence and their hope um, in the Lord. But um, here come this dude out of nowhere you know, saying, hey, I'm the one, you know, basically the Lord is for, or, you know, they, they, they leading up to that point, you know, and Moses quite understandably is saying, well, why would they believe me? <laughs> you know, what, what's going to happen? You know, you can set me up to be a fool, uh, kind of the, the Jonah syndrome he was trying to, to avoid, you know, it's like, repent, repent, God is going to come and tear it up. You know, y'all, all the enemies and, you know, the devil is running amok and God is coming and then the folk repent and it's like, and God does it. And Jonah's like, God, you set me up to look like a fool. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, and so Moses was, you know, didn't want to be set up, A, to die, you know, B, to, to fail, and B, and C, to, to basically be dismissed as a, as, as a crackpot. And so, um, and so, and, and furthermore, he needs to be convinced himself, you know, because right. this is all new to him. He, God has to introduce God's self uh, to, to, to Moses um, in a way that, that that may not have been uh, necessary for the people, um, uh, you know. But God had to. He's just coming into his own understanding of of, of the Lord and meeting with the Lord. And so Moses said, "Hey, look, prove it to me." And the, the beautiful thing about God is, God does. You know, he rests. He he works with Moses. He 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 travails with Moses. He he he. Yeah, what's yeah. the what's the term? Of, um, that they use in the, you know, when the, when you, when you're on the altar and, you know, in the, in the holiness tradition. Yeah. He tarries, tarries tarries. with God, God tarries with us. That's the thing we, <laughs> we miss, you know, we're trying to tarry to the God tarries with us. And so God tarries with Moses and, and, you know, okay, well show them this, you know, this is, you know, and, and I love the, 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 the staff thing because in, in Egyptian um, magic at the time and magic and, and, and God meets the people where they are because magic and, and the belief in magic, remember we're talking three, 4,000 years ago, you know, was pretty universal in all cultures, including with the Israelites, the Hebrews, we see that in, in our journey through Genesis. And so God meets them right where they are and says, okay, well, the Egyptians do this thing where they take a snake and they're able to hypnotize. And that's uh, all the way up to modern times, this, this, you know, where uh, they'll take a snake and a snake and they're able to, you know, magically um, make make it stiff like a staff. And God reverses that and say, okay, that's, you know, that's interesting. Try it. Let me, you know, check this out. <laughs> I'm going to take a snake. You know, and then, okay, well, Moses, that's impressive. Okay, God, but, you know, like Gideon after him, you know, and like others and like us. Um, it's like, okay, God, uh, that's, that's, that's impressive, but I'm, you know, show me something else, <laughs> you know, help me, help me with this thing, you know, and then the leprous, uh, the, the leprosy thing. Um, and, and, and by the way, us, us uh, Afrocentrics, um, you know, that's off that, that verse six is often used, you know, because he put his hand inside his cloak and it came out leprous like snow. And, and, you know, we use that proof text that, you know, Moses was black people. You don't need a proof text. That, that's not a proof text that Moses was black. Right. Lepros, leprosy was a skin disease, um, but you don't need a proof text that that le, that Moses was black. Was black. Look at the map. <laughs> that's all you need to do. Look at the map. Ain't no Romans. Before ain't the no Seuss Greeks. Canal. Ain't no Before the Suez Canal. <laughs> yeah. You know, just look at the map. But anyway, and so you know, it's like okay, that and 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 God is letting them know, hey, I'm I'm in, I'm in control of, of 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 I have the power. I have the power of healing. I have the power of life and death. I have the power of healing and sickness. I have the power of victory or defeat. Um, and it's okay, all right. And then um, the and then the last thing. Uh, with the with the with the with the uh, the Nile water, you know, pour out the Nile water, the source of life, the 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 symbol of life, pour it onto the ground, and it becomes blood, which is the substance of life in their understanding. Um, and the thing is that he has Moses do this. Um, the others, these things are God is doing for Moses to 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 uh, prove to Moses. Now God is saying, I'm gonna do this through you. Because and because there's no greater proof of our work to God when God does it through us. That's why I think in God's love, He does and not for us. And so God does this through Moses, and this still ain't enough to convince him because he's human, uh, <laughs> and this is tough stuff. But it's something that He can take to His people because it's also designed to legitimize 
and 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 um, uh, and show the people that indeed uh, God has chosen him for this task. And when they start walking towards that water, they're going to have to remember all of those things mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. their God is able to do. Recall his record. Let's talk about for a second, verse two, um, where he says, the Lord says, what is in your hand? And he says, a rod. You know, we, we hear this rod throughout the Bible. Your rod and your staff will comfort me. Mm -hmm. The rod, is it the rod of Jesse or the rod of David? You know, so we hear the rod often. So, and I've heard that the rod is the Holy Spirit. What do you guys think? Hmm. I, I mean, I tend, I, I'm, I tend to be a literalist. <laughs> you know, I think the rod is a rod, <laughs> you know, and, and I, but I think it has significance because of its use and because of the shepherd motif that goes obviously all the way to Jesus, I am the good shepherd. And, and the rod being a tool that was used to guide the sheep. And, you know, it's interesting, we had this, the, 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 we, we abused the saying, you know, spoil, spare the rod, spoil the child. Um, but really, you didn't, the rod wasn't used to beat the sheep. You know, beating sheep is not the way to keep them in line. It was used to nudge the sheep and push them <laughs> along and keep them in line. And well, so that, that what the Holy Spirit does? Uh, yeah. 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 I think it's a great yeah, metaphor. Absolutely. I'm just saying, you know, yeah, I think it's a great you metaphor. You just tend to be a literalist. <laughs> yeah, I tend to be a literalist. <laughs> Well, it, it's the, it, it, yeah, and, and it, it and this speaks to it speaks to his power, and 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 you know it speaks to the and the power of the Holy Ghost, you know, and and God using whatever that is in 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 our hands, and uh, and He operates through that. I remember when I was uh, called, you know, beginning. He said, "Sellers, he, what's in your hand?" Here's a that my name three times. <laughs> Sellers, what's in your hand? What's in your hand? I'm looking, right, right, right. I'm, I'm looking at my hand. I'm like, God, there's nothing there, <laughs> you know? And he said, sellers, look in your hand. And he said, I, I'm looking again, like, God, really, there's nothing there. And then he says, what's in your hand? I was like, you know, I'm looking for, you know, my vein, my lines in my hands to, <laughs> to tell me, you know, not that I'm that, but, you know, I'm looking for something miraculous. And then he says, and then he tells me, he said, uh, I said, I don't see anything. He said, exactly. He said, that's that's what I began with. I began with nothing. I created. He said, so use what's in your hand uh, and I will operate through that. You know, uh, he tells, he speaks about the hand throughout the Bible, how significant what's in our hand, even to the, put your hand on the plow and don't, you know, and don't, don't go to the left. Don't look back. Don't take your hands off the plow. You know, he uses what's, what he provides and what he creates through the power of his Holy spirit. And, and, um, so I, I agree. I agree. You know, um, not, you know, and, and I and but I agree with the I being an idealist about it. It was a, it was a rod, but it was a rod that God was using to display his power, you know, and, and, and the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, so it's I think it's a both and, you know, um, but I, I, I definitely believe that the Holy Spirit was at work. You know, it couldn't have changed without it being at work. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to take us on a wild ride because it's my birthday. <clears throat> and so now snake handlers <laughs> in Appalachian Mountains and so forth. Um, when they grab a snake, they usually grab it by the tail, right? Mm -hmm. Is that um, the appropriate no. way to handle the snake? No, or you grab it behind the head. head. <laughs> right. Well, so with that, huh? But when you're, but they, like, if you're, if you get behind it, they, I mean, they're, videos all around you know but when you do grab it behind from behind its tail it's it, it kind of throws him you off a bit. He can't, of yeah he can't mm -hmm. but, yeah mm -hmm. but but and you'll you, it's all over the place mm -hmm. and but also but you know but definitely to control it you know you're putting your 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 but you're controlling it both ways you're putting it but on his when head you grab and, it by the head you have yeah, control you, of it in a different way but when you have it by the tail, tail you, you can take control it off it in a guard different way. you take it um when it's you take it you take it off of it it's it's um it's it's like a sneak attack right. <laughs> sucker punch yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and it can so be controlled I find it, as well mm -hmm. so i find it Not interesting that he said take it by its hand and by its tail mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right so he's letting you know that th what i'm about to do with these people They've never seen before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is not going to be the normal approach to this. Well, and that's how we need to counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. And that's how we need to see it when, when we're confronted with things. We often want to see God move in the nor in the average way, the normal way, the way we've seen him move in other folks' lives, the way someone else has, has testified. But you know, God, behold, I do a new thing. Will you not perceive it? 
He's not going to do it the same way he did it for Jenny. He's not going to do it the same way he did it for Billy. He's going to do it the way he needs to do it for you in your situation. Mm -hmm. And so if I, if he can grab a snake by its tail and control it, <laughs> when mm -hmm. the normal way to grab a snake, a snake to control it is by its head, mm -hmm. then know that you can trust him in any situation. Even if it looks like your back is against the wall, even if it looks like there's more of them against you than for you. You can trust that if God is for you, he's more than the world against you. Mm -hmm. And so I, when I saw it, I said by the tail and, you know, since I knew a little bit about the tearing, yes, I grew up, grew up in the holiness tradition. Um, and so, and with that being said, we know a couple of things and seen a couple of things and, um, and I'm going to leave it right there. Um, but <laughs> I just thought it was interesting to see that because he was, this is the unorthodox way of handling a snake. Yeah, God, yeah, God building... loves to, he's, he's, he loves, uh, uh, pardon? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. He loves to, he's an unorthodox God. He's always counter-cultural. He's counterintuitive. He's not going to do it the way that man expects or desires often. It's the way that he, he proves his might in everything that he does. Yeah. And I think he was also building Moses's confidence, you know, um, you know, as he went along this journey, you know, um, you know, to, 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 you know, to grab it by its tail and to control it, you know, to put your hand, you know, you know, uh, in your cloak, you know, and it comes out leprous and then you put it back in and it's, you know, so he was like, wow, you know, this, this, okay, all right, I can do this. <laughs> as long as you stay with me now, you know, I, I can, as long as you, you know, but, um, but I think he was, <laughs> right? you know, stay I, I, you with know, us, Lord, stay, stay, with Lord us. stay with us, Lord, stay with us, you stay know, uh, us, so he was, right, he was building, I believe he was also building, uh, he was using that natural part uh, of that, that human side of Moses as well that Greg alluded to, uh, because he was, he had to pull all of that in check, you know, he had to pull the spirit, you know, the spiritual he had to pull the natural in, you know, both, you know, first natural, then spiritual, you know, so it's, you know, it, it's, he was using all of him and then he had to grab attention. He had to grab all of Moses's attention and he had to build his confidence up just to even move from that place, <laughs> you know, from where, you know, from the him, okay, this is what I want you to do, you know, okay. given, you know, given uh, all of his uh, reality of where he grew up and what his name was and being that he, was an Egyptian he, uh, Hebrew, whatever that is, you know, and uh, so he, you know, he had to, he had to pull all of that in check, you know, I believe. And it's important to note also that this wasn't just a check, a snake that, that randomly showed up uh, or that got <laughs> set, you know, this was from the staff that was in his hand. Um, mm -hmm. And, and so uh, that this is a real power in that, in the, in the message of that, in the imagery of that, the metaphor of that, in that, God, again, back to the question, what's in your hand? That mm -hmm. God used what was in our hand, what was part of our lives, what was, what was part of our work, uh, of, of his work, of his, of his daily life, of his daily survival, of his daily uh, endeavors, and uses that to, to, uh, to, to, and expands the possibilities uh, mm -hmm. and gets him to see the possibilities of what he already has in his hands. Mm -hmm. And that's, that to me is, is the essence of the gospel. Mm -hmm. It's so, beautiful because testament. the, I'm sorry. Well, I just no both just both old and New Testament. That's all I said. <laughs> Reverend Vines, did you want to go on? No, I was just I was just saying yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, I think it's interesting because he's about to go and encounter the Egyptian scepter that's in the Pharaoh's hand, mm -hmm. compared to his separate staff in his hand. So I I I think that's kind of a cool imagery that mm -hmm. your your basic shepherd staff is going to be much more mightier than this Pharaoh's mm -hmm. scepter that's in his hand. And so I think that's very, very interesting. Um, it was Samson had the jawbone in his hand, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. David had a, a staff in his hand, you know, and, and, and if I can stretch the, the little boy, the five loaves and um, the, the, the two fish and five loaves of bread mm -hmm. that was in his hand mm -hmm. and he gave it to the master and he multiplied it. And so mm -hmm. use what you got, mm -hmm. use what you got. And if you use what you got, God will increase it and multiply it. He'll do wonders with it. Wonders without numbers. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm on that. I believe it. Wonders without numbers. Yeah, that's that's my word now. Wonders without numbers. So 
but he and he'll do it if we just put it if we just give it over to him and allow him to use it. Verse ten. And that's as very we see Moses got a part to see, man. Yeah, right, right. Oh, okay. as we see Moses is still not convinced. Moses says to the Lord, "Oh Lord, <laughs> I've never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant." <laughs> I'm sorry. I love that line. I was not eloquent before you showed up. And I ain't eloquent now. So I'm still the same dude, Lord. Uh, I'm sorry. That my, um, uh, so, oh, Lord, I've never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since have you spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. Verse 11. The Lord said to him, who gave man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? Who gives him sight or makes him blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go. I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, oh, Lord, please send somebody else, someone else to do it. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses, and he said, what about your brother, Aaron the Levite? I know he can speak well. He's already on his way to meet you, and his heart will be glad when he sees you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. I will help both of you speak and teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you, and it will be as if he were your mouth and as if you were God to him. But take his, this staff in your hand so you can perform the miraculous signs with it. Hallelujah. Yeah. So Moses goes into full a full fledged argument with the Lord. <laughs> it's like, no, nah, I you no, nah, I'm not I'm not feeling this. Um, you know, said, please said, just have somebody else. So, you know, mm -hmm. not me. Right. And <laughs> and uh, the Lord can be pretty persuasive, as we all know, uh, mm -hmm. when we argue with Him about uh, what He wants from our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, and so. Um, and 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 I love the fact that that though the Lord is angry uh, at Moses, he's just I think that I think that registers as disappointment. Um, and, um, and 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 yet he said God comes to him with a plan to help him deal with his insecurities and his his uh, fears and and uh, his perceived self inadequacies because God knows him better than he knows him, and God knows that knew his capabilities. Um, one thing that 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 uh, God always that gave to me, I remind myself and I remind uh, others, is that uh, God does not love us in spite of ourselves. God loves us in spite of and because of uh, ourselves, and not necessarily in that order. He He created us, and that uh, we're not saved just because of He's He's feeling uh, pity on us. We're saved because He sees our possibilities, and He sees Moses's possibilities beyond what Moses can even imagine that He's capable of. And that's uh, that's the power of of relationship. Oh. <laughs> so Moses, I thought it was funny to pause that's because good. he said he was slow to tongue. So I thought we'd have this little pregnant pause there and be slow to speak. But, <laughs> oh, you were trying to tie the whole <laughs> right. It was a moment. Yeah, it was you a moment, illustration. You know, we were talking about that last night. We we're talking about don't ask the Lord a question. He'll give you an experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so that's how he yeah. answers questions. He gives you experiences. And so I was trying to give an experience. OK, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we often don't feel we're up to the task and that's good. That's a good sign. Humility before the presence of the most high God is a good place to be. It's the best place to be. It's the secure place to be. And so Moses doubting what he's capable of doing in his own strength um, is, is good. He knows what his strengths are and his weaknesses are. And he's presenting them to the father and said, so what are you going to do about it? Because, you know, I still got this. I got this issue that, you know, people laugh at me about they don't take me serious they don't listen to me and so what are you going to do about that how is this is this going to be a barrier on this journey or is are you going to fix this and so the lord tells him what the battle plan is you know don't worry about it <laughs> i know you're, you're you're slow to tongue so he, he knows that and so when we are coming before the lord you can you can honestly say i don't feel i don't feel adequate i don't feel strong enough i don't feel I have the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, the insight to do this, the strength and tell him what you're struggling with. Um, what I'm always afraid of is when people say, yeah, what is it? I'm ready because no, you're not. <laughs> because as soon as those chariots will start coming, you're going to have the same response. And nobody gets promoted um, to the top levels of the, um, the military without spending time on the battlefield. You have to go through the battle. Um, we think that we can 
just um, take a couple classes, pass a couple tests, hobnob and rub elbows, and we're in. But no, you have to you have to endure some 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 battlefields. You have to endure. What is it called, Reverend Vines? Help me with the language. Um, assaults. Uh, bullets passing you. Yeah, bullets, you got bullets, pass. you bullets pass. snipers. Bullets. Yeah, you got to be able to know what to do because when you're in the middle of that. Yeah. You can't panic. Yeah. You can't panic. Yeah. And 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 part of the, and part of the training, part of my training was and, and part of it you you had to keep moving forward but yet you could literally hear rounds whisping over your head. <laughs> you can hear rounds whisping over your head and um and but if you the don't stay in your position, if you don't keep moving forward, if you rise up, you to go to the left, the, you're going to get hit in the head. You're, you're going to get hit in the head. So you have to obey uh, mm. the, the law that protects you. Right. And there's a certain way that you have to to do it in, in order for you to stay safe, but still yet move ahead in spite of what you're fearing and what you're seeing and what you're hearing. You know, so uh, absolutely. Uh, 100 <laughs> percent. 100%. And so Moses is clear on what his struggles are. And he wants to know what God is going to do about them. Yeah. And, and, and we should often go before him naked and unashamed. We should be as honest as Moses is right now. Mm-hmm. Because he still, he, he was born, he was raised in Pharaoh's house. So he was raised with all the luxury and the opulence and eloquence. And, but he still had a stuttering problem. And he was getting ready to face a. He, he was getting ready to the people that he grew up with and that he knew. They were they knew Moses, you know, in spite of Sir, your, in spite your of, economic structure upside right, down. Right, it's me. Right, <laughs> right. right. So in, and all this stuff y'all got. Well, what's going to happen? Is, <laughs> you're going to have to do it yourself. <laughs> you're going to have to do it yourself. You know, but now he's getting ready to face a people. You know that you know he has all these other things, but they're all like, dude, who you know. Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? You stuttering, babbling. <laughs> what are you? What are you saying? We didn't understand you. Say it again. So he had to, you know. So he was, <laughs> so he was having to prepare to deal with the people, you know, um, there that that made again for another reason in his head that they would not accept what God was saying to him and the instructions that will that that, that was pre-planned to save their lives, you know. So um, yeah, it, Moses was. He had some stuff going on. And he spent most of his time with sheep. So now he's got to go back and talk to people. <laughs> right. You know, and so when you're not, when you don't use a gift or ability or something for a while, you tend to lose it. And so he's now, he's about to go and have to deal with people again. And so it, it, he has some, he has lots of concerns. You know, um, we, I've hired someone before and said, when you and ask them to come on board and they were retired and they said, well, you know, I've been out of the field for a while, you know, and so I don't really, you know, know all of this and all of that. And you're sitting there listening to the ideas that come out of their mind and you're going their mouth and you're going, wow, you, you've been out of the field. You're, you're more than capable. And so I think Moses is just he's just wrestling with humanity, his humanity. And we should. Um, and that's not a bad thing um, in our weakness. His strength is made perfect. And so there it is. When you can identify your weakness, then that's the, the right place, the right time, and the right position for the Lord to step in and use you, you use you in a mighty way. And just worth noting, noting within the scripture that uh, this is more or less the introduction of Aaron, the Levite, and of course, um, he is the the um, eventually going to be the uh, the the uh, um, you know ancestral. Uh, um, Initiator, if you will, of the of the of the priesthood, the line of the priesthood, which would be the descendants of Aaron, of the Levites being the priestly tribe, and so this is his introduction, and um, after which he <laughs> he actually kind of recedes <laughs> to the background. It's funny, you know. It's funny that before this point, I mean, I, I can imagine that, and this is just imagination, that one of the reasons the Lord was frustrated or disappointed or angry, uh, angered by Moses's, um, you know, just flat out saying, send somebody else, is that it's like, dude, you wasn't stuttering when you killed that Egyptian. You know, you 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 wasn't slow to speech when you was trying to get that honey at the well. <laughs> you know, now all of a sudden you're shrinking violent. You know, no, I ain't buying that. But let me meet you where you are. And also where what the it's it's what seals the deal 
with Moses because part of the the fear um, certainly was the sense of I, that I'm alone, that that you know I'm of isolation, of I'm just me. And so the Lord let Moses know that seems to to more or less have still at least have moved him forward um, is to, to know that this is going to be this revolution is going to be a collaborative process. You're the leader, but you're not alone. And, I, and, I, and you're not only alone in the quote unquote spiritual sense, uh, but you're alone because I'm working through all y'all and I'm working through your brother and I'm working through a uh, movement of the people, as uh, my man Bob Marley would say. Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, you know, Greg, we, I mean, Reverend Powell, you know, the, the, the times that we're living in, I mean, right now, you know, it, it, it's we all need to move and go. If every every believer on the face of the earth, they need to 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 pick up their staff and go and use what what's in their hands. Um, and, and I think that this message or, or the study uh, just on Moses and just his life in general um, is, is and the timeliness, you know, even of this study, it's 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 time for the people of God to get up and go and, and to trust God in, in spite of their humanity, in spite of, in spite of their own weaknesses that they need to confess and, and, and acknowledge. And, and so we can become strong and, and move forward, you know, because God, uh, he has us, you know, and, and he will send us what we need. If we, if we feel that we're lacking something, look, tell God about it so he can send it, <laughs> you know, right. you know, you know, it says so he can send it. Yeah. He'll be like, destiny oh. helpers. That's right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. You know, and, and of course, you know, he, he's like, come on, man, I you, didn't that what that your hand wasn't proof enough for you. So, I mean, didn't I just show you just how powerful I am, you know, but still that wasn't enough for you. All right. Well, here you go. But I still need you. I've called you. I've chosen you since you were and I predestined you to, to do this thing. So I'm going to give you what you need. So my so the promise can be fulfilled, you know, and, and I and I believe that's what we all are as believers. We have to uh, we have to uh, take courage and we have to move forward at this point. And, and if we're going to see real uh, Moses experiences and, and create real Moses experiences for the people that we're touching, and 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 seeking to to help and heal and to deliver, we're going to have to get up and go and trust God. Amen. Amen. Verse eighteen. Uh, then Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, "Let me go back to my own people in Egypt to see if any of them are still alive." Jethro said, "Go, and I wish you well." Now the Lord had said to Moses and Midian, uh, "Go back to Egypt, for all the men who wanted to kill you are dead." So Moses took his wife and sons, put them on a donkey and started back to Egypt, and he took the staff of God uh, in his hand. All I know is, come on, Daddy, you gonna let me go with him? <laughs> <To Egypt? laughs> <This dude? laughs> I don't feel Why can't I stay here since we gonna meet up later, right? <laughs> Why can't I stay here if we're gonna meet up with you later, Dad? <laughs> well, I gotta go with my husband, right? And so Moses takes his family to go and do the work of the Lord. My goodness. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a family effort. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be just that one. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be a family effort. And when we try to minimize it to just that one and we isolate the rest, that's when we get confusion. Mm -hmm. This is a house of God. This is a, a house of prayer for all nations. And so it's important to that a minister has their family involved in ministry. It's important. I mean, if you if you if you can't lead your house, then why are you leading us, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And if your kids don't listen to you, then why should we listen to you? And so it's important for them to see that example of your first leadership role, <laughs> of your own compound, your own tribe, and then. And so they all pack up and they go. They follow him into battle. They follow him into danger. They follow him into the war, you know, that it's that is about to happen between the gods. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, I got a little Spartacus on us, didn't wow. I? <laughs> <laughs> and so they follow him into, and Jethro um, sends them off like a good father-in-law does. You know, nothing like Laban. No. Yeah, nothing like Laban, that's for sure. 
And the Lord assures Moses that, that uh, you know, when you go back to people who the initial thing that caused you to flee Egypt, uh, you know, that's been time has and uh, has has resolved that those people are dead. And so, you know, he gives them uh, he lets them know that I that uh, you're covered um, in this initial phase of your journey, which, you know, that that constant reassurance is is part of the journey. And to your point you made earlier um, here is it, made explicit um, that the what's in your hand. Um, that the staff was in his hand. And it was just, again, his daily, you know, part of his daily life. And this thing that's in his hand, this staff becomes explicitly in, in verse, in verse uh, 20, the staff of God in his hand directly, A, you know, again, uh, uh, making the point that it's God uses us, uses what's in our hands uh, and expands the possibilities of, 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 what is to be done with what he gave us and what he put in our hands. And also again, this, that, that this is uh, in contrast to the, to the crook and the flail and, and the just broadly this, the scepter as, as the, uh, the, the, the symbol and emblem of, of power and authority. And so Moses is now operating uh, from this point on in the power and authority, the royal, if you will, uh, or contra royal, royal <laughs> power, the revolutionary power and authority of God you know, in creating and, this world for his people. And just one it, other thing is it mm -hmm. one, in Exodus, and I think that's why our people just, you know, just uh, were so inspired by this text. It's not enough just to believe in God. It's also uh, uh, believing in the world that God wants us to make. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's still he's, a miracle worker. He's still a way maker. He will make a table in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Yeah, He'll yes. make a table in the wilderness. He's, he's, he's definitely he's still actively involved in our everyday, um, you know, as a people of God, you know, and he's just waiting on us to agree with him, you know, and and um, and to and, and dare to, to get out, on, get out of the boat, you know, and and, and to see what's possible. You know, you, you won't know unless you unless you at least try. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's what he's telling Moses. Come on, Moses, come on. You, you can at least try. Come on. <laughs> you, know, right. so, you know, so, you know, but so Moses uh, uh, agrees, you know, and 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 like he takes his family, which is important. And, and everybody's connected. You know, everybody's connected. And, and we are an extension of one another, our, our immediate and those in our external. You know, we we have to move together. We have to do this thing together, and 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 we have to operate in agreement. If if it's going to get done in the way he and that will please him, you know, right. it can get done. But he's like, ah, it was all right, <laughs> you know. But but we want to hear him say, well done. And there's a way, you know, and 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 there's a way that has to be done in order to get that well done. Amen. Verse twenty one. The plot thickens. The Lord said to Moses. When you return to Egypt, see that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders I have given you the power to do. But I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. Then say to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord says. Israel is my firstborn son. And I told you, let my son go so he may worship me. But you refuse to let him go. So I will kill your firstborn son. Ooh -wee. Mm. Remembering the promise. This. Israel is my firstborn. Mm. Remembering the promise. Mm. You know, this is a long time away from when he first spoke it to Abraham, but he still keeps his promises. He is Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. And so he's about to, he's letting them know, this is how serious I am. If you take mine, I'm going to take yours. I feel like this is like the Harambe code, eye for an eye. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. This is what it is. And so, and the Lord is saying, you want, you're coming for mine and I'm coming for yours. If you won't release mine, then I, I will come for yours. And that's in, and know that is how he will, he will watch over you jealously. And if, when he does, that's how he operates. He brings the, the heavenly host <laughs> to contend with those who contend with you. And so you can rest assured that, oh, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You don't have to fear because you will possess your possessions in the name of the Lord Jesus. You're going to get what God has for you. And all this is the, the, the greatest power of the known world, Egypt, the breadbasket, as Reverend Powell loves to call them. And so it's the greatest power of the known world at this time. And God is letting He's letting Moses know that you don't have to worry about their power, their might, their, their magic, their wizardry. 
I, my power is mightier than theirs. My outcomes are greater than theirs. And I'm going to show you that if they don't release my sons, my firstborn, Israel, then I'm going to come after their firstborn. And so all I can say is be on the Lord's side. <laughs> be on the Lord's side so that you can, you can get your well done. I believe every time he gave Pharaoh an opportunity, I, we haven't gone into the, the plagues yet, but every time he gave Pharaoh an opportunity, he declined and he continued to demonstrate he was pow more powerful than their pantheon of gods. He was giving him a chance to repent. He was getting him a, giving him a chance to, you know, come to the knowledge of who he is and, and, and to worship him, Yahweh, worship Adonai Elohim. But Pharaoh was, was so committed and, you know, and this morning as I was in prayer, I was thinking of the very natures of some of these characters. And it's, regardless of what they saw, their pride and their arrogance just would not let them do the right thing. It just would. I mean, come on, Pharaoh, you saw this, the water part. Why would you go in it? Because <laughs> whatever part of it can close it. But his pride and his arrogance wouldn't let him stop Jezebel, you saw the defeat of all of your prophets, but she still went for him because her pride and her arrogance would not let her stop. Nebuchadnezzar, you saw the the um the 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 the, the was it the moon or the sun stand still? You saw the great powers of God. You saw God heal. You saw God deliver, and you you saw the angels destroy them at the gate, and you still. You know, they just don't seem to get it. And so pride, that's why they say pride before the fall. And so these characters, this, these, this nature, the spirit wants what it wants, even to its own detriment. And so trust God that in spite of the roaring lions, <laughs> he's a kitty. <laughs> he's fake. His, he doesn't have the bite that he thinks he has. And so if you can walk, through the valley of the shadow of death and not operate in the spirit of fear because you know that he's with you, then you'll get to the other side and you'll get the prepared table waiting for you. But we often panic. We often fold. We often go into pity by the pool. And, and, and those things don't, they don't give us what we want. They don't get us where we need to be. And so we can have our outcome sometimes a lot sooner. But we, we deviate and we check in with woe is me. We deviate and we check in with pride. We deviate and we check in with all of these natures that don't produce the outcomes that we desire for our lives. And that build our legacy for the kingdom. It's, it's, it's interesting that, um, you know, and, and it says a lot about how God works in, the, in, in humanity. Um, to redeem humanity um, at the point of our humanity. And so we see and in, in, in throughout as we go forward, we'll see well, in this passage, we see that the Lord saying, I will harden Pharaoh's heart. He's doing um, and, and, and going through, as we go through the text, it goes back and forth. You know, the, the Lord hardens Pharaoh's heart or Pharaoh hardens his own heart. And, mm -hmm. and, and, the, and in the, particularly in the Old Testament, and keeping in mind, these are ancient texts. And so, you know, uh, ancient understandings that, that they're, um, that, 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 that uh, uh, the messages are coming through. Um, but um, that, that there's this, this that, that, that God uses, operates in people within their own and working with and around and through their own individual, their own humanity, their own motives, their own needs, their own fears, their own issues, um, and, and works through them to, to accomplish uh, uh, God's purpose. And, and so, and, and, and that's kind of the, 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 um, tension that you see in scripture a lot when with how God operates because it's 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 not other than it's through uh it's it's operating in and through and and so uh we and so with regard to 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 the the people that 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 God has assigned Moses to liberate um God begins by changing their identity you know up to this point they're state property they're slaves this is their they've been there 400 years this is their identity um, this is there. Uh, we, we would presume, as we particularly as we see later on in in numbers and whatnot, this is they have this mentality of who. The, how could you not have this mentality 
of 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 being captive for all the for for all these centuries um, and not have what what uh, you know what some folk would call colloquially a slave mentality um, and God and certainly a slave ident identity. And God says, no, you're no longer state property. You're, you're no longer the property of Egypt. You're no longer exploited labor, just that. Mm -hmm. You're no longer just, uh, uh, you are my firstborn sons. You are my firstborn people. Uh, you are my people. And so he begins by changing their identity um, and, 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 and saying this to, of course, for Moses to say to Pharaoh, but he's also speaking and presenting this to his own people. And when God says, let my son go, therefore, uh, or else I'll kill yours. Uh, you know, we have to keep in mind also, because again, these are ancient texts. So, you know, but um, eye for an eye, which is, yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's absolutely what that is. You know, you killed my firstborn, I'm going to kill yours. But we have to understand in the ancient world, um, eye for an eye, as it becomes later encoded in law, it was meant to diminish, was meant to put regulations on the already existent uh, uh, culture of violence uh, that existed in the in the ancient world and certainly in this one. And so in the ancient world, if someone killed somebody or did somebody to something to your people, to, to a person, you would go could go and wipe out their whole village, <laughs> you know, or if you had the power to do so. And that was the norm. And so God says, no, 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 that's the, you know, we can't, that's chaos. You know, let's limit the violence to the to a, you know to equality. You know, let's let I me mean, let's have some semblance of justice that doesn't let's that, have that some doesn't leave everybody people. Yeah. Come on now. And of course, you know, we see Just Jesus later on completely upending and subverting that, um, and, and, and adding new whole new depth to it with you know basically you know the the love thy enemy and all of that. Um, and you know, if you if as Martin as I think Martin uh, put it, you know, if if every if it's eye for an eye, then everybody ends up blind. But you know, right. again, we're seeing the progress uh, from here into uh, throughout Scripture. Uh, but but it's important to note that God was not this bloodthirsty God seeking to you know this gangster God seeking to get back. God was putting limitations. I'm not going to destroy the whole nation. I'm not going to just wipe ev the whole you know everybody off the blot of the earth. I'm going my um, response will be commensurate with uh, the 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 off offense to my people. It would be merciful. He was being merciful. <laughs> he was being God because <laughs> he could have taken them all out. Yeah. Well, you know, we 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 um we go into some villages in some re regions in Africa. <laughs> I won't talk about the countries where um there are wars <laughs> between the the villages and the chiefs and. Yeah, yeah, it's finger soup and, <laughs> and things of that nature. We've seen justice. We've seen the justice that someone causes harm to somebody and the whole village goes and they capture the person and they, they beat them and, and stone them to death. You know, they beat them or stone them to death. And so we witnessed yeah. that and yeah. it's still prevalent today <laughs> for the record. Yeah. Yeah. And before we Americans wag our feet fingers at others, you know, it's a, our our atrocities are much more efficient and much cleaner. Um, oh, we you know, have we bombs. Drop bombs from 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 drones. <laughs> <laughs> we drop bombs on our own people. Yes, Billy. And wars that against right. nations that didn't do anything to us uh, because we want anything. their oil. So that's a you know. So you know, if we're going to measure atrocities, uh, we better uh, you know be careful. You know, you don't throw stones in glass houses, so to speak. Right. Mm. We're just talking about the Haramic Code. That's all we're talking about. That's all we're talking about. We're talking commentary. about that. We go into places before the police can show up. They've already executed justice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when the police show up, no one goes to jail. Yeah. And they just kind of do they write a report? <laughs> you know, and right. And it's done because this is this is their culture. This is what they do. And so this pattern, this practice is, is, is all, although antiquated, it's still quite prevalent today. That's all I'm saying. Oh yeah. And unpacking the, also the, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the whole notion of, of um, that, that, that there was a notion in the ancient world that we see throughout scripture that, uh, that um, the, the sins of the parent of the father, not in terms of tendencies or trends or, you know, genetic dispositions or whatever, but literally was passed on to, to the children. And so, um, uh, and so uh, the, 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 the sins of the whole nation of Israel, uh, excuse me, of Egypt would be passed on to their uh, uh, firstborns to pay the ultimate penalty. And, and so again, this is a very ancient concept. We see Jesus in John chapter nine, 
you know, ultimately subverting that when, you know, when the man who was born blind, who was uh, blind from birth, his disciples ask him, Rabbi, who sinned, thinking of this old modality, who sinned, this man or his parents, but that he was born blind. And Jesus says, neither, neither. <laughs> you know, he's saying, got nothing to, you know, this, this, this is, you're, you're operating under the wrong, under a too limited paradigm, paradigm for God, yeah, that yeah. this happened, that the work of God may be displayed in his life. So we see, again, an evolution in, in those ancient concepts of justice and retribution and all of that. Verse 24. Yeah. At a lodging place on the way, the Lord met Moses and was about to kill him. But Zipporah took a flint knife, cut off her son's foreskin, and touched Moses' feet with it. Surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me, she said. So the Lord let him alone. At that time, she said, bridegroom of blood, referring to circumcision. Circumcision. For, for the record, I don't think I've ever read this. I don't think I have. 24, verse 24. You've I don't read think. it just to make it, sense it, to you. And it, and it, you know, right, so because I'm, this is the circumcision. Yeah, he, Moses didn't it. circumcise his son. Yeah. yeah, he didn't circumcise his son. And so God was, that was a sign of the covenant. That was a sign of you are my people. Mm -hmm. And so Moses hadn't done that. So that's what that is. And, and bottom line from a and, and <laughs> bottom line, nobody knows exactly <laughs> what's uh, what's going on there. Um, you have definitely the introduction of circumcision as as something, uh, of course, you know, um, and Moses in all likelihood being Egyptian because circumcision was practiced in, in Egypt for, you know, for thousands of years before that. Um, and so presumably he was already circumcised, which is why the circumcision was to the son and not him. But bottom line, um, you know, um, no one really is clear you know, there is it's open to different interpretations. No one is really clear what that what that means exactly, uh, because uh, you know some of those sources of that are pretty are you know are just lost to history. Um, but of course, it, it there's also the representation of the uh, that foreshadowing of the blood on the lamppost door covering uh, against the the Lord, the angel Lord killing Egypt's firstborn. Um, leading up to the Exodus, and you know, there's a lot going on there. And and uh, you know, bottom line, you know, <laughs> you want to talk about it? We just, yeah. we just, we just all try to work it out. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, want, you want to elaborate? You know, <laughs> I mean, some commentators have said that that because Moses killed the Egyptian, that that blood guilt. Uh, was held against them, and that yeah. the shedding of the blood of the you know through circumcision, and then the plying of that blood to Moses uh, removed the blood guilt, and, and that that you know stopped the Lord from killing him. But ultimately, uh, you know, you know, folks, you know, we don't know, <laughs> right? Because yeah, it's a sacrifice, because it's the blood of an infant. So the infant is pure; he is not sin. So it's a it's a it's a it's a spotless lamb, if you will, and so. Mm. So when she throws it at his feet, right? You covered by the blood. Somebody better give him some praise. Hallelujah. I was just thank you, thank you. Verse twenty-seven. The Lord said to Aaron, "Go into the desert to meet Moses." So he met Moses at the mountain of God and kissed him. Then Moses told Aaron everything the Lord had sent him to say, and also about all the miraculous signs he had commanded him to perform. Moses and Aaron brought together all the elders of the Israelites. And Aaron told them everything the Lord had said to Moses. He also performed the signs of before the people and they believed. And when they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshiped. And that's the close of the chapter. Wow. Wow. He was like the ultimate evangelist then. Huh? He was just, <laughs> he just like, he, he, he brought a whole nation to God, <laughs> you know, in a, in a deeper way. Um, you know but I mean, Hmm? No, no. No, I was just saying, you know, it, it how he just the order of that, you know, and I know there's the, the other verses before, but just 29 and through 31, it was it's just the order of 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 how God used Moses to uh to portray his message and his and his love and his, you know, and his embrace, you know, uh, after 400 years, uh, and how he used Moses to call them all together. And the manner that he did it, you know, he showed he, Moses first had to decide to go, you know, and if and if 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 Moses rebelled against the command of God, you know, the people would have not saw that God was with them, you know, and as a result of that, they would have stayed right there in Egypt, you know, uh, they would have, they would have been there, uh, but God called a man, and as He calls us, 
uh, to go into the world and to um, let the people know that God is alive and that he's with them, you know, and, and once they believe that, you know, you, you'll and, and show them that God is actually concerned about them, you know, then they will come to him, then they will follow. But, you know, just the order of how God kept, I mean, how God used Moses just to capture uh, the, the, the heart of the nation to himself was just, you know, it's just evangelistic to me. <laughs> And I love the fact that Moses is still obviously working his stuff out, because if you note in verse 28, uh, Moses uh, tells Aaron, of course, everything that the Lord sent him to say and about also all the 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 the, the signs uh, that uh, that uh, that he had commanded uh, um, Moses to perform, except Moses kind of tries to pass that on to Aaron. Uh, the enacting of those signs as well. And that ain't exactly what the Lord said. The Lord said, Aaron is to speak for you, but you're mm-hmm. going to do the signs. And mm-hmm. so it's funny that Moses, I just love the fact that as throughout all this, Moses is working this out in his own mind and spirit. And as we go further on in the story, um, as, as uh, you know, we'll see that, that basically, uh, you know, that it isn't too long before Aaron can't get a word in edgewise. <laughs> <laughs> his confidence was up. <laughs> I know what I'm doing now. I know what I'm. Yeah. I got this now. Just stay, there. Just stay in your place. Stay in your lane. <laughs> come when I call you. Come, just come when I call. You. I'll let you know when I need you. I'll, I'll let you know when I need you. <laughs> and what, so, yeah. No, go ahead. Oh, and I, it's it's moving to me. Um, in 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 after after all of this, and and uh, you know, he performs the signs, and they believe mm-hmm. that 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 you know, indeed. God is doing something here um, through Moses, but it's when they hear that the Lord was concerned about them mm-hmm. in the midst of it all, that the Lord was engaged, had seen their misery, misery and then in the Hebrew, it, 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 it encompasses more than just seen. It means that God has been engaged with you. I've been with you in the midst of it all. That when they heard that God was that God was concerned and and had been engaged and had taken note of had demonstrated concerned about uh, the suffering under the, uh, of their their oppression and their suffering, that's what moved them um, to bow down and worship. I want to bring out the fact that you know his wife discovers on the journey how important his calling is, and mm-hmm. that the Lord was confronting him. You know, they just it just says that the you know it came to pass that on the way the Lord confronted him, you know, on the way to kill him, you know, what happened? (laughs) You know, what happened along the way that made her God and the baby, you know, all of this go down the way that it did, that she had to grab this flint knife and, you know, (laughs) to save her husband, you know, choose wisely. (laughs) That's all I can say. Choose one that's willing to, that's not afraid of blood. (laughs) Okay, I'm done. I'm not touching that. <laughs> Leave it alone. <laughs> She's the one that's not afraid of blood. That's right. I mean, she knew what to do. She knew what was required. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and so I see that in the text. I'm sorry, I'm a woman. I'm a wife. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I see that in the text. She knew what was required, and she did it when he didn't do it. And so, praise you the Lord. There it is. Yeah. Anyone want to wrap up? And well, that is the, the conclusion Lord. of chapter four of Exodus. <laughs> <laughs> Next so week, chapter Mr. five. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we want to invite you to have a relationship with him. The whole purpose of gathering here is not just for the believers to grow in the word, but it's so for you to get a chance to know him for yourself if you're not connected to the Lord. It's important for you to have a relationship with the one who can hear your cry, who will come to your rescue, who gives you a calling and a purpose for your life. And we all have one. They don't look the same. We're not all going to be Moses, but some of us are Aaron and some of us are are not mentioned in the text by name, but we have an important role to play. And we need all people on their, in their, on their post and on the battlefield. And we need you where you're supposed to be, where God predestined before he formed you in your mother's womb, where he put you. And so we're inviting you today to please repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, thank you for the Lord Jesus. Dear Jesus, come live in my heart. Be Lord of my life. I believe right now I am saved. 
Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for my new beginning. Thank you for salvation. Amen. If you prayed this prayer today and you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, you are saved today. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the good news is God doesn't give salvation and take it away like most people do. God, when he writes your name in the book, he doesn't erase it. He doesn't take a big eraser and takes it out when he's angry with you because that's not how he operates. He's long suffering, if you will. He allows us the opportunity to come back into fellowship and relationship with him. What we can encourage you to do is whenever you, you screw up, get right. Confess it. Tell them what you did. Tell them you're sorry. Ask for the spirit of wisdom to guide you to, to operate that rod. You need that rod of the shepherd to guide you. And, and God will do it. And, but you need to be connected to a body, a, a church that can grow you, that can help to help you grow into the knowledge of who he is. And new faith is available to you. If you're because of COVID, we are we have access now all over the world. And so go to newfaith.org, newfaith.org, fill out the new members information. You'll get a new members package. You'll get go into new members class and you'll become a full-fledged member of this amazing ministry where we're transforming lives because we are people of faith seeking the heart of God through worshiping, witnessing, and sharing the love of Christ, God's son with the entire world. If you want to be a part of that, go to newfaith.org today. We love you. Stay safe and we'll see you next week. God bless you.